Good afternoon. It's Monday, June 21st, 2021. It is a much cooler day here in Iowa. We did get some very good rain yesterday. Uh, obviously not nearly enough. We are quite a ways off on our rain totals for the year, but it's a good start. Uh, we give God thanks for that. And we ask that you continue to pray for beneficial rains. We do still need them, and we will need them going forward. A reminder of our in-person worship services this coming Sunday, 8.30 at 1st, 10.30 at St. Paul's. Both services will have Holy Communion, and both services will be live-streamed. A big thank you to everyone who helped make Vacation Bible School here in Garnavillo a success last week. Um, our grandkids had a grand time at it, and we know that the other kids involved also enjoyed it very much. And that took the effort of everybody involved, of the volunteers and the planning and, and the Iwalu counselors. We're grateful that our young people got to learn about the Lord in a variety of ways, and it was a very, very good week. And finally, Jackie and I would like to say a word of thanks for all the prayers and support we've had as we laid my mom, Florence Hatcher, to rest this past Saturday. We are very grateful for the kind of love and support that has come to us at this difficult time. And we're grateful that Mom is at rest in the Lord now. I think those are the announcements I'm going to touch on for today. I just want to share this verse from Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. These are your words, Heavenly Father. Sanctify us in truth. Your word is truth. Amen. My youngest brother, Doug, died in 1989, February 25th to be exact. He died of the same lung disease that my brother Mark received a lung transplant for 12 years ago. And, and fortunately, at the time of Doug's illness, they weren't in a position to do the kind of transplant that he needed, and his time ran out. About six months after his funeral, I kind of came apart. I had been so busy supporting the family and being there for people and making sure that things were accomplished and done for both Doug and for my own family that I didn't take time to grieve myself. And that grief showed up about six months later. And I had a very long, hard time dealing with the grief. I finally went to a counselor at Lutheran Social Services in Cedar Rapids and to try and get a grasp on it. And as we talked, I remember saying to the counselor one afternoon, I don't know why I can't get over this. And he said to me, why do you think you have to? And that was a thought that apparently had never occurred to me before, that grief isn't something that you have to get over. In fact, trying to get over grief is probably an impossibility. Grief will always be there. It will be there in a variety of shapes and forms, but it will always be there. I am reminded of a conversation I had with a parishioner back in 1979. She had lost a little baby at the age of two, and that was some 70 years prior. And she was saying to me, Pastor, I still think about her every day. And it had never occurred to me that we would be carrying that kind of grief with us all of our lives. Grief is a reality in human existence, and to pretend that it doesn't exist only does us harm and does injury to those around us. And so we are to grieve. I have learned over the years, and I share with people as they enter into grief, that nobody grieves exactly the same way. We all have our own unique way of feeling sorrow and grief and of dealing with it and coming to terms with it. What works really well for one person would be a living nightmare for the next person. And I think it's important for us to remember and to give ourselves permission to grieve and to allow that grief to become a part of our lives. We will find that our grief changes over time. It may not always be as bitter and as sharp as it is in the beginning, but it will be there and it will be a part of who we are. 
And I hope and pray that as the time passes that our grief will become indeed a blessing for us. A blessing that enables us to both get a good perspective on our sorrow, but also to be able to understand others in their sorrows. But one of the greatest gifts we can give one another is to grieve with them, is to suffer with them, as the word compassion tells us. And especially if we have gone through the same kind of experience that they have gone through, it is a treasure for us to be able to sit down with them and to say in one way or another, I do understand what you're feeling and what you're experiencing. Now, there are several things about grief that we want to avoid um, because they do more harm than good. And of course, the first of them is if you haven't been through the experience of the person who is grieving, if you haven't had that happen to you in your life, do not ever say to them that you understand what they're going through, because you don't. You may mean it well, and you may intend it to be comforting, but if you haven't experienced it, you truly have no clue. Also, it is never helpful to suggest to someone that they should try and get over their grief, put it behind them, stop being so sad about the loss, about the person who has died. That is bordering on cruel. We carry our losses with you. We carry the names and the faces of everyone we have ever loved who has died, and they are in our hearts. And to tell someone to forget about that person or to put them behind you is to say to them that this person never really existed. And it is particularly true with a parent who has lost a child. One of the hardest things we have when we encounter someone who has lost a child is our willingness to acknowledge the child. It is an unfortunate thought that to mention the child, to talk about the child, would be so painful for the parents that we ought not to do it. When in reality, that's the very thing they want to do. They want to talk about their child. They want to remember their child. They want others to know that their child lived. Just like my parishioner who had grieved the loss of a two-year-old little girl years before, she wanted to talk about her daughter, and did. And it was part of her healing and her restoration of hope. The one thing that we can all share, and that we can hold on to, is to confidently live in the resurrection. To share that good news with those who are able to hear it, to pray that their hearts are open to hearing that Christ is risen from the dead and in so doing has taken the death of everybody with them into life. To be a listening, caring, and oftentimes a shoulder to cry on. And sometimes simply to be present. We would underestimate the gift of simply being there for them of waiting with them in their sorrow and allowing them the time and the place in which they want to begin talking. And they will. We don't have to force it. We don't have to expect that they will have a timetable by which now we've been so many days since their death. Now, now you'll start talking about them. That will simply come. But for the sake of Christ, who suffered and died for us, who has borne our sorrows and carried our griefs, let us bear one another's sorrows and carry their griefs, so that as we grieve together, we might find hope together, hope in our risen Lord Jesus. Let's pray a bit. Our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that Jesus has carried all of our sorrows upon his shoulders, and that all our losses are wrapped up in him. Help us to hold on in hope when we are faced with the loss of those we love, when death comes into our lives, when we are wounded deeply. Help us to understand that we will indeed carry those sorrows, those grief with us the whole of our lives, but they will not become our life. Rather, in the light of the resurrection, we will see them as what they are, a separation for a time. But because of the resurrection, 
a separation that one day will end when we greet one another again in the kingdom. We thank you for your ongoing love that sustains us, that will continue to sustain us, and will be there for us even in the face of death itself. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. Well, I look forward again to seeing you all on Wednesday. I hope you have a good rest of the day. And until then, goodbye now.